Hello oh. Before we begin the video, let's discuss Cloud Foundation. Cloud Foundation is the premier online training platform to help individuals and organizations gain knowledge and skills in the ever-growing cloud computing industry. Perfect. So now we have covered the basics of NetSuite. How do you navigate, and all that. Now coming to the part, the actual course. Content is. First thing is Sweet Script. So let's say, what is Sweet Script? First thing. So Sweet Script is a scripting language which is based on JavaScript, but it is created on top of that and then being designed in such a way that you have certain APIs available. You use those APIs and then build your own logic. So this is called Sweet Script. This is not JavaScript. This is NetSuite's own scripting, called Sweet Script. Now Sweet Script has three different versions as of now. So you have 1.0, 2.0, and 2.1 is recently released. So these are three different versions. What we are going to focus as part of this course is 2.0, primarily, and because 1.0 is going to end in some time. But on time to time, I'll give you some pointers like, what is the difference? How do you use that in 1.0? Let's say, if you're writing a piece of code, if you want to understand how do you do it in 1.0, I'll talk about that definitely. So this is Sweet Script. And then Sweet Script is primarily categorized into two things. One is client-side scripts, and second is server-side scripts. So client-side scripts are the ones, as the name itself specifies. These are the ones which will execute on the client-side or the browser level. So if you, as a user, working on a form or working on a record, and when you have deployed a client-side script, it will trigger on your browser level, and it will perform all the logic, it will perform all that validation on the browser level itself. And then you have server-side scripts. These are the type of scripts which actually executes or triggers on the server side. And when the request goes to the server, that's when the entire execution happens. So client-side script. It's only one script which is client-side script. And on the server side, we have the different category of scripts. We have user-driven script. We have sweet late, scheduled res late, whatever we're going to talk about, right? And then second thing, once you deploy it here, right? C. Let's say client script, right? So, if you see here, the type itself shows that it's client. So you remember, when we select the script name and then click try to create a script record, like try to create this record, and it self-identifies what type it is right. Yes, that is definitely. That is because it identifies based on the functions you have defined in the script. These are all the functions which are there in client script. Okay, okay, page init save record. Right, yes, and in this script, what you are using is this page in it only. That also identifies as soon as you create this record, because in the script definition, if you see, here we have only used page in it here. Yes, yes. Right. And at the end, we have mapped it to page in it function. So we are only using page in it. 
As soon as you create or upload this script and try to create the script record, NetSuite identifies what function are being used, what type, what script type it is, what API version it is and, based on that, you will see. Now if you want to see what all scripts are there in NetSuite, it has all this type segregation also. You can see all these, you know. By clicking on any category, you can see what script like what all suite lists are there. Like you see, these are all the suite lists which are there in already an instance. Then you have different API versions also. I'm showing only 2.0 right now. And then if there's anything created from bundle or directly, so let's say, if I say none, which means these are the ones which are created directly, not through a bundle, right. And then you can, by clicking on deployment, you can go to the deployment record also. Okay. Okay, this is how you will segregate, but as you write a piece of code, obviously you'll understand. Because every script has a different, different syntax and different functions. And every script type has their own usage. It's not like you can. You know you can use. I mean, any problem you can solve through multiple solutions, I understand. But there will be one optimized, optimal solution, right? One optimized solution. Or you need to reuse the right script. For example, if you have to do a mass or a huge data update, right? If there are these high volume of records, and then you have to perform some activity on that you know that those number of records, then you'll go with schedule, script, or map. Map to the script, for example. Right. So that's how, that's how you segregate or that's how you utilize different scripts based on your business needs and based on the problem statement. And every script has their own functionality and their own usage. Okay, yeah, so yes, I like it. It's how to identify the user. That's from uploading the record server you use for schedule the script, right? So for the client script, if you suppose, if anyone gives any task, anything. So how to identify the OK? This will be used for the client OK. Now that, as a developer, is your responsibility. What script type you will see? I'm talking about a real-time scenario. Let's say you get a problem statement or you get a, you get a task. Basically, you get a problem statement. Let's say, you have to do this activity. As a developer, it's your responsibility to identify which script and which function will be the right function or right script to use in this particular problem. Okay, okay, now I know this is being your first. Being your first session. I mean, this is a little overwhelming, I know that, but you will understand that it might ask for you. To that it might ask for you, you know, to make you understand this. Obviously, by the end of this course you will be confident and clear enough that you understand the differences. You understand and you understand what script is used in which scenarios and all that. Right, that's, that's my time. Obviously, that's because about so you don't worry, yeah, but the, but honestly speaking, when you understand this thing, that which script to use, what function to use, and what will be the right solution for this, a best solution for this. Once you understand that you are, you are done like you. That's it. Writing. Writing a piece of code is not something which will, which will be tricky, I understand. Initially, it will be challenging because you have limited knowledge and you will eventually explore all the, you know, all the APIs, all the types and everything which will be learned. 
There's a learning curve with everybody write. So you learn and then you'll be confident in writing a script. But when you get a problem statement and there's nobody to tell you, there's nobody to tell you what script to use and all that then based on your understanding. If you have to make a decision and then come up with a solution, that's the part where it is more and more challenging. Right? You have to understand the problem. Come up with the best solution. Make sure your existing system is not hampered. So there are two cases. Right. You do if you're working on an implementation project that's a fresh system you can you have a little bit luxury. To mess, mess around with us right. When I say mess around like if you, if you make a mistake, there's still an option because that system is not live in production already. But if you're working on a system and let's say, if you're working on an announcement on top of an existing system, that's that's when. That's when there is a risk. If you develop something new, if you deploy it in production, it should not hamper your existing production functionality. Correct. So that is where you have to be clear enough to choose the right solution, to build the right solution, and then make sure that your existing system is not hampered. Let's say, on the help portal, first thing, okay, so so you have already. You have certain libraries. You can create your own libraries also, right? And then under libraries, you have some, some sort of functions which are predefined, and you can utilize this. That's any programming. Yeah. That's a standard for any programming language, right? Yes. So similarly in MetSuite also you have different libraries available. Okay. This is called a module. In the MetSuite world, we call it module. Now there are different modules available. To perform some activities, and under each module there are different, different APIs available. Okay, yeah, this is the entire feed script. Honestly speaking, there are... And finally, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.